You've heard New Year, New Me every New Year's, but have you heard New Year, New OC? It's a little secret in the art world. Hi. Thanks to you guys' overwhelming positive response on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, I've come out with a new shirt just for you guys. Use the promo code TRUECREW to get 10% off your purchase. Also, if you're over the age of 18, send me any photos you have with the shirts on Instagram, Twitter, or email me at whatever'sart at gmail.com. And I might just post your picture up on Instagram, Twitter, or even here on YouTube. Link down below in the pinned comment, and on to the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to another day of Art Talk. I, your gracious host, whatever's art, is here to talk to you about subjects that we have throughout the art world and questions that I have from the day to day as myself as an artist and that you might have as an artist. Uh, this is a nice little video for if you want to draw, you know, you can have a nice good drawing time with just focusing with hearing me talk in the background. I'm going to try not to make this one as long just for specific reasons. Uh, the next one we do should be longer. Next week's video, though, should be a YouTuber art. If I'm not lazy, <laughs> listen, listen to me right now. If I'm not lazy, next week should be a YouTuber art. I need to do a YouTuber art. If I don't do a YouTuber art, uh, you can wag your finger at me in the comments for me being bad. All right. So this week, I decided to ask a question that was still sort of close to last week's question but it has more of a talking point and it's kind of more up to interpretation uh, with your answers. Uh, I, if you are wondering where I'm asking the questions, you can always answer the question that I'm going to have uh, probably in the pinned comment or it's going to be edited here. But you can answer that down below or when I ask the question on Instagram, you can also answer there. And I will take these anonymously unless you put down like specifically like, oh, mention my name or something like that. Uh, otherwise, we just kind of go back from back on this. Some of these things might be personal, so I don't want to give out names so that way they can still feel confident in themselves and they can still just hear my response. Uh, they don't have to be worried about people going, huh, I heard you on that whatever is our video and you have problems with sharpening pencils. And it's like, oh, no, my greatest fear. People now know that I can't sharpen a pencil. Ah, like, you know. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to put you on spot that you can't sharpen pencils, okay? Uh, I'm not judging you, as you remember with the coffee face. Uh, I'm not judging you people on Twitter either. Uh, I just judged my Twitter people a little bit more. That's it, alright? That's, I know I just contradicted myself, but it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Alright, let's, let's start with the question. So the question this week was, what is the difference in your eyes between good art and bad art? Now... Uh, some of you already might be thinking to yourself, and I'm just going to say it early so you don't all leave the video. Uh, there is no such thing as good art or bad art. Art is up to interpretation. We'll see. See, I'm leaving up in the air. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Mm. So our first question is, I mean, our first answer to that question is good art is passion and never getting giving up. So I like this perspective because I feel like art is always going to be so when you're beginning, when you see improvement, that art is good to you. Like, in a general sense, uh, I know when I went from, like, this artwork to this artwork, it was like, oh my gosh, look, I've achieved a new level. Do you hear me, Kakarot? Like Vegeta monologuing. I've reached a new level, uh, Kakarot, in my artwork. Soon, I'll become the legendary artwork saying like something something stupid like that like I always felt so good when I saw improvement like that cuz it was like oh my gosh I can't get better I'm not total garbage <laughs> like on a on an honest note it's just so nice to see that your efforts uh, are putting th things in and I do feel like that passion uh, when it comes to artwork and when you really like or enjoy drawing something it does shine out a bit more uh, you know, as long as it's... Now, I guess, it's just in a general sense, it, it works. It was just passion, you know, not just, like, monetization or something like that. Uh, you can see it in your eyes when you're definitely trying to work at something. Uh, my thing is now people are relating me to being a booby artist. Uh, I didn't realize how many boobs were in these last current art pieces. 
Uh, I think my brain's trying to tell me something, but we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, so our next one says, my art and your art. My art bad, yours good. Lies. Because I feel that exact same way <laughs> with other people, <laughs> which makes my art bad. It makes their art good. <laughs> we all have that perspective. You shouldn't judge your art based off other people. It's good to reflect, but don't use it as a basis for your art. There's a lot of people who draw really cartoony art, and I'm, like, losing my mind right now because, like, on Twitter and stuff, they have such a following because, like, cartoonish cutie art is uh, very retweetable. It's very it's very likable. It's very uh, shareable. But at the same time, we're different artists. Like, I'm doing a lot more, trying to do more realism or semi-realism, and they're doing a lot more cartoon work. And I shouldn't judge my art based on them, and they definitely shouldn't judge their art based off mine. I can't draw a cartoonish art, or at least I have a really hard time doing it. And a lot of people, uh, if you're new to art, you might take this as a, what? Like, oh my gosh, cartoonish art? Yes. You have to know your proportions, you have to know your anatomy, you have to know what you're shortening, what you're focusing on, what you're emphasizing, usually it's the eyes, you make those a little bit bigger, um, to really get this stuff down. And I have such a hard time with that. My semi-realism is more of my comfort zone. I'm trying now and then to do a little bit more of cartoonish or anime style art, but give props to them. I will always give my props to a real struggle, and that is a real struggle. Oh my gosh. Um, also keeping everything consistent too when you do that. But don't judge your art based off other people or you're not going to be happy about your art like ever. It's going to really suck. Just reflect with it. And I know it's really easy for me to say that because I do the exact same thing. <laughs> I am also a hypocrite. But <laughs> I'm trying to help you so you don't have to suffer like I've suffered. All right, great, cool. On to the next one. Um, so uh, another person put as well, it's kind of the passion thing as well, the effort you put in. And I do feel like that as well. Um effort that you put in really does add to whether or not you even feel your own art piece is good. If you spend like 30 seconds on it, you're going to be like, ah, oh, no, obviously this is trash. But if you spend like an hour to like a, a day on it, you know, you're just like, man, this is like a, it's like a 30 a day masterpiece. We sat here like Picasso, just, just painting and working. And you know, it's, it's funny how much uh, time and effort can really add value to artwork for yourself and for other people as well. Uh, if you heard that, uh, Say, if you heard that Art Germ spent like two seconds on artwork, you'd be like, oh, I mean, that's cool. But if you heard that he spent like 30 days on this exact same artwork to give to you, you'd be like, oh my gosh, dude, 30 days? He spent 30 days on this? Why, well, I can't wait to look at all the intricacies and all the very small details, the minute, uh, careful uh, experiences of art. Like, you'd be all like, oh my gosh, I'm blown away and stuff, uh, depending on the time, which I think is hilarious. Uh, either way, I still enjoy his art. I'm just saying that uh, if you had more time in it, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you put that much time into this. What? Uh, also, too, because uh, if they can't tell where you put the time into, if they can just see like it's an overall very good art piece, but they can't tell where specific you put it in, it gives them more of a where's Waldo of all the details and how did you put this much time into it, which is great. You want to keep them looking. Um, it seems like another one. Uh, good art has always been good art has a lot of effort put into it uh, worked hard on it bad art for me is just nothing I feel like nothing probably I had to screenshot these things so I'm only kind of partially seeing it uh, probably has nothing put into it is what they're trying to say and again I also agree um, and then I guess that is also the thing because then you have to ask a question and that's kind of more so why I picked this question uh Good and bad art, is there even such a thing? Like, obviously, you know, you'll go on those compilations of people watching videos, and you'll see all the Sonic OC arts, and it's like, a, like, oh, here's my new Sonic OC art, and they trace Sonic from Sonic Heroes, but, like, change his hair color and junk. And they called it, like, oh, this is really good artwork. And then, like, even if you hate it, if they spent time on it, like, obviously, like, let me ask you this question. So if a 10-year-old kid comes to you and is like, oh, man, I drew this uh, Sonic artwork, like, even if they traced it or whatever, it still means they have an eye for artwork. There's a lot of artwork I don't like. Again, I said the last video. Um, but I can definitely recognize that these people have either have potential or are already ridiculous artists. I question where they put their art time, but it's what they want to do.
Now, there's art you dislike, but is there technically bad artwork? Because everyone's going to be better than everybody for a while. I feel like maybe when you're beginning, you can kind of qualify it as, ah, you know, I might find this in a bad territory. Because obviously, like, I don't want to be completely unrealistic and it's just like, oh, every person's artwork is good, Jimmy, because you put uh, care and love into it. Because I, I, don't, I don't believe that with, like, a lot of things. Like, if you... I feel like, again, it really shows. It's like effort. If we were all on track... Um, and you were trying to run your hardest, like, what am I going to say? Like, I'm like, oh, no, uh, you did a terrible job. No, you, you were trying to run, and you ran. So good job, you ran the race. Versus if you, like, ran two steps, then stopped, then looked around, then, like, didn't care, then, yeah, it would show that you didn't put much effort into it. Uh, that was a long way of saying uh, an analogy that agrees with you that I feel like effort really does determine things. I just don't want to be unrealistic and like, oh boy, everybody is wonderful. That's my Mickey Mouse voice of over positivity from, you know, in a general sense. Uh, if you think of too much positivity, is probably Mickey Mouse. Um, it's like, it's like a good feeling and a bad feeling. So that didn't really answer my question, but I think it does make sense in a way that you can look at your artwork uh, I know I've streamed art before, and I've looked at it while I was streaming, and went, man, I do not like this. <laughs> and I don't know why. I have no real reason to think so. Uh, outside of my other artworks, it still seems similar to my other artworks. But those artworks, I like. This one, I don't. And I feel like, uh, as an artist, you are really the only one who can kind of determine if you feel like an artwork isn't up to par. I don't think you can say whether or not it's bad. But I do feel like you can say whether it's up to par to your standards. So that's it's a bit different. Um, so, oh, my bad. I didn't mean to say his name, but uh, yeah, I don't think he cares as much. Um, I'm just going to say, one says, effort, time, passion, and skill. Everybody else is going to be anonymous, but sorry, one on the bus, my bad. Uh, <laughs> so, effort, time, passion, and skill. And I agree with most of those things as well. And I feel like skill is a factor that gets added in. Uh, later in the game because again, I, I do believe that when you're a beginner you should see some of your artworks as good It'll give you more motivation to try uh, as long as you don't get stagnant with it I feel like it's a nice balance between the two that you should understand that you are a beginner and that it's good artwork for your level That's what you should have it as in your mind. Um, I do that now I feel like I should continue to do it as I get a bigger better and That way I don't lose sight of or become complacent with my artwork uh, or lose sight of my goal, so I was trying to say. I'm trying to finish my sentences now, because I just remember that last video. <laughs> I was like three minutes into a monologue and just completely lost track. But the skill thing, I feel like, gets added in later on, because it's kind of like, there. you can still watch a YouTube video with stick figures, and as long as you're doing enough animation and motion, like, oh, now it makes the stick figures cool. Like, we're so subjective about what we find good at a moment in time. <laughs> so... The skill kind of, I want to say, not flourishes, decorates your artwork, obviously. Uh, because first the effort, the foundation, and the time. And then the skill only adds to it. Because now it shows that you, it, it's, it's almost like a telling of more time that you put into it. It's like a plus 10. Like if you can like, oh, they detail hair super well, plus 10. Uh, if they detail eyes super well plus 10 like it just adds to it because it shows that you already had time and effort uh, invested in your hobby or job and now it shows even further with the works that you're doing even if it's like a short period of time because you know what you're doing you waste less time and it shows uh, the effort you've already put in beforehand so I do feel like that's good thank you for that one I think that was a very nice add-in to this uh, Someone else put, if it's good art, you can tell what the picture is supposed to be. And, again, so now this comes more to a subjective uh, view of it. And I don't disagree with them. Uh, I might sound a little flippy floppy, because, again, this is more of a, oh, well, everybody's a great artist kind of video. But, uh, yeah, I feel like if you can convey the message that you're trying to make, you know, it's a good artwork. Uh, you're trying to show something to somebody. You're trying to get them to feel something or get them to see something. Uh, and I guess in a sense, it still doesn't have to be the most detailed work in, you know, history. Uh, simple gesture artwork is, like, super big with showing just what people are, like, trying to do. If you'll see someone, I just watched a video with Jim Lee. I think it's like my first couple of videos with him. 
when he was showing how to make dynamic poses, and he only drew the torso and the waist, and he had to, like, two lines for the legs, and you could immediately tell the guy was running. And he was like, yeah, you see, he's running. You can you can tell. So as long as you know you have good poses and things, um, and as long as you know that what you're trying to convey, then, yeah, I would say the artwork's good because you put effort into trying to make a actual purpose for your artwork um, in a sense. And I, I feel like I need to do that a bit more of my own artwork. A lot of my artwork is, you know, it's just kind of like beauty. That's about it. So it's <laughs> Especially when I started, it was just kind of like, that's what I wanted to, you know, display. Just like, beautiful women. About it. Like, there's not much more. It's just as simple as it is. Or at least beautiful to my taste. You know, everybody has their own taste. Uh, but, yeah, no. You know, it's just showing off a desire that you have. And I feel like that's really good. I was going to say as well, this is just an extra hint for you guys uh, as artists. With poses, if your pose is obvious with the silhouettes, you know, like the black shadow, um, it makes your pose with all the color and stuff come out better. If the pose is clear, the pose shouldn't be cluttered in the silhouette. You should be able to tell what they're doing. It's a bit difficult when it comes to, like, people putting their arms behind their backs or they're having their body closed, but that can also work for your benefit if you're trying to show somebody as being, like, shy or, uh, maybe... Uh, closed off to everybody else, so then you can have their silhouette be very bulky and um, clumped together. That's like an extra tip. Uh, it's not really part of the video, but extra tip for you all, just in case you want to show a bit more with your poses and things like that. It's just something I've learned and heard recently. Um, no, wait, wait, wait. This one, this one, this one. So this one was earlier before. The first time I read it, I went, oh my gosh, here we go. Uh, so let's go. Good art is like sexy in the style uh in style in the idea in the spirit of the piece itself now i don't mean know if he means like actually just like sexy sexy or if he means kind of like uh smooth or attractive uh or alluring because uh, it kind of goes hand in hand but i guess uh it kind of goes with style idea and piece, and I, this is more subjective, I feel, because then again, now it goes to opinions, because there might be certain styles you hate, because there's a lot of styles I'm not really fond of, there's a lot of them I love, uh, so that one can kind of go either way, uh, as long as, again, the skill level's kind of there, uh, and the idea, you know, the idea, so as we were saying before, conveying a message is kind of important, and then the spirit of the piece, which I feel goes more with the idea as well, so, yeah, you know, I feel like, I feel like that works. It's still kind of coherent to the overall thing that we've been saying. So this person puts it, and this also says their perspective a little bit. Bad art is not enough skills. Good art is skills. So, to this person's opinion, their artwork will only be good or bad, at least this is how it seems, um, based off their own view of their artwork, which isn't a bad one to keep. But it can narrow your vision, to my own opinion. This is, you know, my talk, so my opinion on this kind of thing. Um, because you will always see your artwork as bad until you have enough skills. And then you have to ask yourself the question, when, when, it, when do you have enough skills? And the issue with that is, is that if you are the judge of your own artwork, you might find that you never have enough skills. And other people feel you do. Now, I'm sure with most people, your perspective will probably change. Uh, regardless if you want to hear people or not, the more people talk about it. So, obviously, you know, if 10K followers randomly jump on you or whatever on Instagram or, or Twitter or something like that, you're obviously going to gonna think about your artwork a bit better than you would if you were, like, if no one was looking at your art. Obviously. It's just human nature. We're social creatures. We look for validation. It's as simple as it gets. But, with in this sense, it's kind of like you're, you're closing yourself off, which also might be good in the sense that you can develop what you want. So I guess there is, a, there is a pro to that. You can develop the skills that you want because you won't be so influenced by other people. Again, it's a lot of back and forth. It's, it's funny how this works because there's not really an answer to this question. There's a reason why I asked the question. Um, that way you all can leave your opinions about what you th feel good or bad art, you know, what makes it good or bad down in the comments below, but it's funny how, like, there's not really an answer to it, and there's two different perspectives to this. It's kind of subjective, where it's, 
after a certain amount of skills, we will somehow know whether your art is good or bad, or it's about the things that aren't necessarily in the artwork, but the time, the effort, and what you put into it. Also, there's other perspectives like age. Because if I was going to tell you again, uh, a 10 year old drew this versus uh, a 30 year old, you would obviously think the 10 year old's more skilled, but they need work. Versus the 30 year old, you'd probably tell them, mm, you know, you're about that age now where maybe this is not what you want to do. Also, by the way, anybody can start drawing at any time. Don't let, don't let your age stop you. But just for this example, you would judge them differently. So I feel like it's really funny that, especially because if we go back to the other point, how at what, what amount of skills allows the artwork to be good? How do you judge that? How, how do you judge that without it being an opinion? There, there's not a factual level. Now we do know that in order to master something, they say you need about uh, 10,000 hours to master something. So I guess that is an actual definition almost of like XP for humans in real life. You're leveling up like a Final Fantasy character. But outside of that, there's not really a, a really good way to do that. And the other way that we might judge ourselves is by having someone else more experienced judge our artwork. And that way we feel like we're validated because their opinion obviously, obviously matters more than others because we find authority in their opinion. But then again their opinion will be their opinion. What if that one big artist hates your artwork, just like straight up, like, oh man, it's terrible, but everybody else likes it. Now, obviously, more examples are probably going to be, they both hate your artwork, but still, still, imagine there's that disagreement. Then who do you listen to? Whose op opinion is more valid? Obviously, they're going to tell you, you know, certain skills and things that you're missing, so I guess in that sense, they would be more correct, but art should be appealing because you're trying to give off an ideal or something that people might enjoy in your own perspective. Like, you shouldn't commercialize it, obviously. I mean, it's kind of up to you. Uh, but outside of commercialism, like, they just enjoy your overall feel and idea. Who do you listen to? What makes the artwork good now? Is it the people or is it the people you find as higher level than yourself? It's really weird. I guess you could make the argument a bit clearer if you were like, oh, well... If I was listening to people telling me how good I fight, I'd be listening to Goku, not, you know, uh, actually, I guess that kind of doesn't work. I was going to say other people, but then again, people judge <laughs> their fighting styles based off the Masters, and Master Roshi and them are nowhere near as powerful as Goku, but then you could argue it's because they have skill, and they know what they're doing. But I would be a betting man to say that Goku knows way more about fighting at this point than Roshi does. But if you were going to ask Goku who you would talk to, it would be Roshi or King Kai or people who are weaker than him but have a better overall view of what he's doing. Again, it's really... It's, <laughs> I really like this question because it's very kind of nuanced. Um, let's, let's go on to the next question because I don't want to make this too long. Uh, I still have things to do. We still have the stream today. But, uh, so there's another part to this. Uh... Actually, I feel like this one kind of goes back with it. Sorry for all the ums and uhs, by the way. I feel... I guess there's everyone's different perspective in art, which is what I was just talking about. And I don't think the use of good or bad art is appropriate. I feel like experience matters. But then that means you do believe there is a level of it. But I do agree with you. I don't feel like the term is necessary. And I feel like a lot of people, they get so wrapped up in becoming a good artist, when they see other people's art, that's the time they want to use good or bad. They don't want everyone to use it with their own. They want to use it with other people's. And I feel like a lot of people use those two adjectives in order to bring other people's artworks down. And I know that sounds kind of freedom fire -ish, like, oh, our art is good, man. But, like, a lot of people won't develop if they don't believe their art is good for a while. Obviously, we all need our balloon popped now and then. But overall, it seems most people are negative about their art. I haven't met too many people who are super positive about their art. A lot of people seem to be very down on their art. So adding more negativity to the factor isn't going to help them. You're not going to do anything better for them by being like, oh, man, your art works bad. What you could do is tell them, you could tell them a criticism, but also tell them where they succeed at. So your eyeballs are really good, but your head shapes, you know, they're kind of, they're a little wonky. Uh, sometimes they pe see people, they'll draw their eyes like really close together. 
And I know someone's looking at my artwork like, you did it in this piece, don't talk. But the, a lot of times they draw really good eyes, but they draw them way too close together because practice with anime first uh, instead of realism, and I did that as well. I'm still learning to try to get out of it. I saw the practice drawing a realistic eye. But that kind of, <laughs> kind of it's, it's kind of weird how we judge people's art, and it's kind of how we use it to bring other people down is just by the adjectives. Uh, there is no such thing as bad art, just a lovely, uh, just a lovely little mistake that you can fix and, or embrace, which I feel is also true. You really shouldn't look at your mistakes kind of as a hindrance to yourself. You should look at your mistakes as a way to guide yourself. If you see that you're drawing something wonky, then you know what you need to work on, and you don't have to focus on other things at the moment. You, if, you, if you know your eyes are terrible, you know, draw more eyes. If you know that you need to draw a skull and figure out the proportions for a head, then work on a, for like a week on just the proportions for a head. Get it memorized to yourself. There you go, Lee. I, I got it memorized. Um, <laughs> or Axel, because then you'd be like, you didn't get it memorized. It's Axel, not Lee. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, your artwork is something for you to learn off. Every artwork you've done, is something for you to learn off even with stick figures and stuff like that the gesture of the stick figures can be something you can learn from always have yourself at a maybe a humility is maybe that's the word for it always have yourself in a state of humility enough that you can learn from different things it's like when I talk to people about uh, overall narratives within games or within stories that they might not play themselves, that there's a lot of things that you might learn from these games and narratives. People underestimate what you might take away from a game, or what, might, what you might learn from a journey on a game like an RPG, and the thing is, like, oh, it's just a silly game that, you know, my kid plays, but a lot of these things influence the way you think later on in life. All my ambitions and junk and all the way I act like that, it's probably because Dynasty Warriors, I love that game. Thank you, Koi Tecmo, for following me, by the way. They followed me on Twitter, and I lost my mind. It's the only time I ever had, like, a whole fangirl moment and just freaked out like crazy. Oh, my gosh, dude. I, I was, like, I was like giddy all day. But, <laughs> back to the subject. Dynasty Warriors definitely helped me with a lot of my ambitions and the way I see uh, the my takes on advancement and how I have to spread, you know, my uh, artwork out out to people and get publicity and other things like that and I probably wouldn't have that perspective if it wasn't for that and then also with cartoon shows like Ed, Ed and Eddie them always running their scams I'm not scamming you people that's that's not what I'm saying but them having grand plans and uh, ideas to take over the neighborhood and other things like that or in order to get jawbreakers you know what I mean those kind of things influence my thinking quite a bit and I've come to realize that as I've gotten older what you watch what you play influences what kind of person you are so you should always have yourself in a state that you can learn from almost anything that comes to you in my opinion that's how I like to look at it when I have a subject that kind of either comes into conflict conflict with my beliefs or comes into conflict with my ideas or my idealism anything that comes and might have a statement I always feel like I should take with a grain of salt uh, you shouldn't just dismiss other people's artworks or their opinions because you don't agree with it. It narrows your vision, and it doesn't help you learn anything. You'll be a much wiser person, in my opinion. You don't have to change your beliefs. You don't have to completely change your beliefs just because someone else told you, oh, your beliefs are wrong. But you should at least see it from their perspective. Why in their world would they think this way? And the same with art. Why would they draw this way? Why are they here? What are they learning? How much time did they put into it? You can tell so much from following somebody else's footsteps, somebody else's strokes, and taking a moment to walk in somebody else's shoes. See how clever that sounded? I want to end on that one because that one's... <laughs> it's not going to get any better than that. <laughs> that was super smooth and I felt good about it. <laughs> also, we got to stream soon and I got to I gotta, I gotta edit. Oh, Lord. I, I, Kingdom Hearts 3 has ruined my schedule. I'm trying to beat it before people start going all crazy spoilers over YouTube. YouTube keeps putting on people's suggested Kingdom Hearts videos. And it's like, I, I pressed not interested. Lucky enough for me, I'm already like halfway through the game already. But like, if I press not interested, it should be not interested. Don't show me more. Do not show me more. I know you need the algorithm, but what you could do is use all that algorithm space to share my videos, please. <laughs>
Also, if you made it this far, comment True Crew down below. You guys are the real ones. I really do appreciate you. Um, shirts, you know, they're still on sale. You know, get yourself a shirt. Send me photos and buy a shirt if you're over 18. Don't want any of the younger people doing that and then your parents coming after me, right? It's your fault, not mine. YouTube says you should be over a certain age anyways. I'm watching you. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, I guess, well, it was the last day or a couple days for Patreon. So, new Patreon next month. You know, sign up for Patreon. That helps some support. And thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully, you guys got to do a little bit of artwork or enjoy yourselves, which is a little bit of introspective. Hopefully, all my ums, uhs, and all that kind of stuff did make me sound so uneducated that you couldn't listen to me talk through this video. I'm going to try to work on it. But uh, I haven't done a lot of talking videos in a long time. So hopefully you all enjoy and have a good day. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. This is where, this is where you leave now. <laughs>